Hi there guys, it's Thursday the 4th of February and today we're looking at Anglo-Saxon law and order. And before we start, I wonder if you can take your minds back to when we were all in school together in the autumn and we were looking at the Romans. We learned a little bit about some of the rules that Roman soldiers had to follow and Roman laws. I wonder, can you remember any of them, anything about Roman rules? And if you can, can you tell me on Teams what you know? So today we're going to look at the Anglo-Saxons and how they kept law and order because it's really important. If people are breaking the rules and stealing and killing people, then you're not going to stay around for very long as a civilization. And the Anglo-Saxons really wanted to hold on to their power, which meant they had to keep their people in line doing the right thing. So what were their laws and how did they follow up on those who broke them? So I want you to think if these Anglo-Saxon punishments seem fair or foul. First of all, we've got Baldwine, and Baldwine has stolen a pig from the market. As punishment, one of his hands are cut off. Do you think that is a fair punishment? Is that fair or foul? Elfgar kills his neighbour, Wigmund, when they get into a fight. Punishment, Elgar has to pay Wigmund's family a hundred shillings. Does that seem fair or foul? Mildberg has been accused of doing magic and being a witch. And as punishment, Mildberg is hung by the neck until he dies. Is that fair? Is that foul? Alwyn, a slave, tried to run away from his master. As a punishment, he is whipped and his little finger is cut off. Is that fair? Is that foul? Do you think we would have these same punishments today? Well... Strangely enough, many of the laws that we have today are the same. They're not that different from the, the laws of the Anglo-Saxons. However, our punishments are very, very, very different. You are not going to get bits of you chopped off for breaking the law in England. But in England, what happens is if you break the law, you either get a fine if it's something small, if it's something big like theft or murder, you would be sent to prison for an amount of years or maybe even your whole life. But in Anglo-Saxon times, there were no prisons to send criminals to. So the punishments had to be really scary to act as a huge deterrent to those who were thinking of breaking the rules. A deterrent means something to put you off. So if you saw Baldwin getting his hand chopped off for stealing a pig, you're much less likely to try and steal a pig yourself because you don't want it to happen to you. And that's because they had to scare everybody into doing the right thing. They were often pretty brutal punishments. The different Anglo-Saxon kings and kingdoms each had their own laws and punishments. We're going to look at a few of the general Anglo-Saxon laws and punishments today. So these are some typical Anglo-Saxon punishments and they were always done in public so that other people could see and the guilty person would be made an example of. The first one is stoning, where stones, heavy stones, were thrown at the person who'd committed the crime. Sometimes this could result in that person being really, really injured, having broken bones or even dying. It's quite scary. Next, you have paying a fine. So you would pay some money. If a person couldn't afford the fine, then they could become a slave instead, which is quite horrible as well. You had hanging, which is where you go to the gallows and there is a noose around your neck. There was drowning. There was whipping, mutilation, which means having bits cut off like your finger or your hand in those examples we saw. Branding, which is when you are burned with a hot iron rod with a symbol on you. Funnily enough, when we say saint and we write it down, we put ST as an abbreviation. ST used to be a brand for sheep thieves. And there's a story behind that that you might want to look into. We also have stocks. You were put in the stocks for almost a day at a time, two days at a time. People might throw things at you, it wasn't very nice. And we had exile, where you're sent away from your family. And this could be really dangerous because there were lots of wild animals. There were lots of people who might want to rob you and take what you had, and you wouldn't be able to rely on anybody for food or water or comfort. So all of these punishments were pretty harsh. But how did they decide if someone was guilty? How did they know if someone had committed a crime. If a jury, so a group of people, couldn't decide if a person was innocent or guilty, then what happened was trial by ordeal. This is where the person who was being accused 
would have to do something very, very difficult. And some of the examples here are they would have to walk at least nine feet on hot coals with their bare feet, so burning their feet, which is pretty horrible, putting their hand into a pot of boiling water to retrieve a stone, or picking up a red hot iron, which is what's happening in that picture below. If the wounds from these trials were healing cleanly with no infections after three days, then you were considered to be innocent in the eyes of God and they would say you had committed no crime. If your wounds got infected or weren't healing, they would say you were guilty. Now, this isn't a very fair way of deciding things, but things in the Anglo-Saxon times were very different and they weren't as scientific as we are today. Something else the Anglo-Saxons used was something called wear guild, which is quite strange. And it was a payment system used to settle arguments and disputes between the criminal and the victim's family. Wear guild was paid if somebody was killed or hurt, and the amount that was paid depended on how important the person was and what was chopped off. So we've got an Anglo-Saxon scroll here that says, if a free man is killed, so someone who's not a slave, a hundred shillings wear guild is to be paid it's 300 shillings if it's a nobleman, somebody really important, and it's only 20 shillings if you're a slave. Do you think it's fair to put a price on people's lives like that? I wonder if you could tell me on Teams or leave a comment on your work. So these are some of the prices for parts of your body that you would pay in wear guild if someone chopped them off. So if I broke somebody's tooth, I would have to pay them or their family one shilling. If I broke their nose, that's 10 shillings. If I chopped their finger off, that's six shillings. If I chopped their thumb off, that's 20 shillings, because that's really important. Can't pick up your tools without a thumb. If you chop their foot off, it's 50 shillings. Your job today on your team's worksheet, you've got a quiz about Anglo-Saxons, laws and punishments and I wonder if you can match up the crimes and the punishments and look at the wear guild as well you've got lots of different questions today they're all multiple choice I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and it hasn't been too gory for you it's definitely very different to what we would do today in terms of law and order but leave me a note on your thoughts when you do your quiz there's space at the bottom for you to tell me about what you've learned and whether you think these punishments are fair or foul see you later guys bye